<laughs> Hello, I'm Beige Dingleberry, and it's time for me to make another amazing documentary that is in no way, shape, or form completely ripped off of subreddits like ONA or The Fighter and the Kid. I also, for the record, do not listen to a show they call Red, um, Bit, Bit R. I've never listened to it and am not influenced in any way. Is there anything you do like? Do like. Tonight, we dive into the world of a relationship guru slash online grifter. No, not Dante Nero. In fact, I have reason to believe Dante Nero stole much of what he knows from tonight's subject. No, not Patrice O'Neill. Tonight, we dive into the world of Rolo Tomosi. Born April 2nd, 1969, Rolo Tomosi is a 52-year-old failed musician LARPing as a relationship guru. Rolo's family began after Lo Senior Tomosi got his girlfriend pregnant with an old keeper nigger baby. Alas, this lovely home life was not to last long as Rolo's father left his dog-faced ugly bitch of a wife for a woman with what he perceived as higher sexual market value. It is my theory that Rolo's entire career is a desperate attempt for quote, daddy to love me please. At the very least, he has made a career from reenacting his childhood trauma from a position of power, playing out the role of his father again and again and again. This can also be seen in his hero worship of the painter Gagant, who left his wife and kids to pursue his hobby of painting, something Rolo claims to be quite good at. Though my biography of Rolo's early life is based on his own account, there are some inconsistencies. Rolo's earliest attempts of worming his way into smashing mad puss came in the form of him joining his high school theatre group so that he could hopefully get a performance mandated kiss. Finding himself incapable of landing a role as a leading man, he dropped out of drama and began LARPing as a musician. After high school, Rolo's stepmother, an alpha cunt, kicked him out of the house for being, quote, 40 watt and failed at life. This is where we begin to find some of the inconsistency in Rolo's telling of his own story. In some accounts, Rolo started as a wage slave at a guitar center and worked his way up to rock star sex god. In other accounts, he was a delivery driver, an occupation that he likely arrived at after seeing a make money quick advertisement on television. In still more accounts, Rolo worked in the corporate world of advertising. While he is happy to brag about his smallest in-studio gig as a musician, he makes no mention of landing any large advertising accounts. So his advertisement career is likely little more than spinning a sign for a company that was perpetually going out of business. After spending his 20s smashing mad puss, Rolo did what any young Lothario would do. He began hanging out with incels on message boards like So Suave and doing what he could to help less fortunate lads get their dicks wet. Feeling that his keen insights into the fairer sex was more than just a hunch, Rolo went back to university to pursue a degree in evolutionary psychology. Seeing that his ideas were too radical for the libtar teachers, Rolo appears to have dropped out before graduating to pursue a career as a writer. The rest of our character study will include a look at his Instagram posts as well as a quick overview of his writings in Sea Org terminology. Rolo's Instagram tells the tale of a man who has everything a boy could want except for a woman. Rolo enjoys posing with guitars, going fencing, standing near a snowmobile, posing next to cars he does not own. But don't worry ladies, this is not the first time he's driven a Lambo. Aping the Instagram post of hypergamy human thumb, Joe Rogan. 
spending time with an effeminate looking homosexual dog. And most telling, LARPing as a hunter that doesn't appear to own any guns. In fact, closer inspection of his post reveals that Rollo wore his camo jacket out to go voting, likely for Hillary Clinton. Finally, I'd like to take a moment to look at Rollo's terminology and writing career. The Rational Mail is a book series born out of Rollo's blog splot in conversations in the manosphere. This community, when I when I discover a community like this, it's like picking up a rock and finding a fucking ant colony underneath it. And like, I wouldn't have known it was there, but I picked up the rock and now I'm grossed out by the maggots. Like, it just exists, you know? There's a lot of shit going on. Rollo's first book, The Rational Mail, was published in 2017. The audiobook comes out to 14 hours and 20 minutes in length. This is not a joke. After I purchased his book, the algorithms on my phone began sending me advertisements for divorce proceedings. His second book was called The Rational Mail Volume 2 Preventative Medicine, which comes in at 8 hours and 50 minutes long. His third book published since 2017 is called The Rational Male Positive Masculinity, which comes in at an astonishing 23.8 hours long. If this is not enough Rollo for you, he also live streams for two to three hours at a time, offers private consultations, keeps up a blog spot, and takes on students for mentoring. All right, let's go over his Scientology Dakota Ring horse shit and we'll get out of here. LTR stands for Long Term Relationship. SMB, Sexual Market Value. AFC, Average Frustrated Chump. ONS, One Night Stand. DHV, Demonstrating Higher Value. LDR, Long Distance Relationship. JBY, just be yourself. The two terms that Rollo uses most often are AFC and hypergamy. AFC again is your average frustrated chump, something he definitely didn't steal from a black guy that he met at a bar one time. Hypergamy basically seems to mean that we all want to be with someone who's better than us rather than someone who is less than us. He's also known for coining what they call the shit test. Something my friend Dante Nero claims as a Dante-ism. Yeah, a woman gives you shit to make sure you are the shit. Yeah. All of this has led to women referring to Rollo as a PLWCGLWTALTW. Pathetic loser who can't get laid without tricking and lying to women. As always, I'd like to thank my Patreon subscribers. Nat Klo, Casey, Pammy Cakes, Kenny TV, Joker, and the Taliban bomber Jordan. Thank you and good night. Yeah, Lil Fabby X. Fat, fat. Easy music. Lil Fabby X. Fapping off to you. Mm. Girl, I want you to get your credit card and sign up for Philip Way's Patreon. Five dollar is the minimum, but you can give more. Yeah, you can give more. Give your money to Ian. Give your money to him. Give me all your money right now. Join the Eno's Patreon, bitch. Yeah, you know you're just gonna throw that money away anyway. You might as well support it. You know? See, I can't even get the rights to my songs. I'm so broke. Yo, give some money to Ian, goddammit. And I'm gonna kill Drake. Hello, I'm Bay Stingleberry. While many of you thought that this was a throwaway bit that would only occur once, it turns out we've only just begun to scratch the surface of the shit stain that is Rolo Tomasi. While tonight's documentary is going to take some rather dark twists and turns, I'd like to begin with something light. Let's start with the name Rolo Tomasi. 
there has been some conjecture as to where it come from. Let's go ahead and take a look at the evidence. So this is one of the major receipts that we had with people at once. And this was sent to me by an anonymous person that said, look, you know, these guys again are screwing people over. They're trying to act like this. Now, this is this is Robo Tomasi's uh, page here, George Miller. So basically, it's not Rolo Tomasi. So he ain't no Italian motherfucker. You ain't Italian motherfucker. You're George Miller motherfucker. You ain't <laughs> wow. no motherfucking Italian. Nope, he's not you don't know shit about Italian. Don't try to be like Rolo Tomasi motherfucker. You ain't no Italian. George <laughs> Miller. So fucking George. Yeah, that's Italian. That's We're Italians motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. For many of you watching, this information is shocking, as it is directly conflicting and conflicts with the public nice guy persona of Rolo Tomasi, the Mr. Rogers Godfather hybrid personality he has crafted in the public space of the manosphere for years. The man who tells you like a broken record that he's not in it for the money, but will privately state that he's a get rich slow guy. To understand the Rolo Tomasi of the manosphere, we must look at the original character that inspired Rolo's choice of this name, from the 1997 major motion picture LA Confidential one of Rolo's favorite movies of all time. It should be noted that many Manosphere icons have unusual names like this. Mystery, Style, Socrates, Goldman Unleashed, and myself, Dream, just to name a few. Chosen names are not given names, however. They are chosen for various reasons by the individual. Consistent among these reasons, however, is that the name appeal to their core values in some way. They like the name enough to not only choose it, but retain it over many years and intentionally be known by this name to millions of readers, fans, and viewers. In our community, Rolo is unique among top creators in that he picked the name of the secret villain, a police captain played by actor James Cromwell, celebrated as a small-time hero by his local com community, while secretly being a murderous, backstabbing traitor to his brothers at the LAPD, and therefore the community as a whole. Speaking of movies and cinema, in the last documentary, we mentioned that Rolo signed up for theatre in high school in hopes of getting a performance mandated kiss. He claims that he put theatre behind him to pursue music as a more lucrative means of smashing mad puss. It turns out his theatre career has continued. While he has not been able to land any roles, I do have footage of him auditioning for commercials. Please pay special attention to his gay face, as I'm sure it's the reason he did not land the role. I have done a lot of acting, by the way, as as you, as all of you black pill fuckwits want wanna wanna smear me with. That's fine. Yes, I have done acting before. When people go and they show, oh look, here's Rollo Tomasi, and he's doing this. He's doing some, uh, what was it, tryout or some sh some shit? Like I think I did a commercial tryout back in like 20. 13 2014 and i left it on one of my um my youtube channels it's gone now don't go looking for it i'd already deleted it um but of course they go and they download that and they go oh, look see this is what it's really all about <laughs> there's an epidemic among adults in nevada it's called fomo and it's going viral chris jones has more talk to your doctor and get caught up on your vaccines before it's too late there's an epidemic among adults in Nevada. It's called FOMO and it's going viral. Chris Jones has more. Talk to your doctor and get caught up on all your vaccines before it's too late. There's an epidemic amongst adults in Nevada. It's called FOMO and it's going viral. Chris Jones has more. Talk to your doctor and get caught up on your vaccines before it's too late. Scotch, scotch. <laughs> because that's where they're at. That's the mentality right now. Rolo is part of the PUA community, which stands for Pick Up Artist. <sighs> More like PU because you stink, stupid. Well, you might think that he would be slinging dick till the day he dies. Like many Pick Up Artists, he's actually married and settled down. Let's take a moment to look at Rolo's wife. What would you rate this wife, this woman here? This looks like, you know, like a scary creature here with bangs. Gross. Below average. Busted trash. Okay, and a, and a lot of you can't stomach these comments. You might be wondering, how did Rolo land this hearty boom body? Well, it turns out she's a drunk party girl. Say that again? 
Didn't you meet your wife at a gig because you did, right? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, of course I did. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I met her at the place you're not supposed to meet quality women at, right? I mean, you're supposed to meet quality women at the library and Barnes and Noble and the coffee shop, right? Or Bible study, right? That's where. No, I, I was, um, I was at a gig, and um, it was, uh, I won't tell you where. It was in Northern California. Let's say that, um, and. Uh, she was there with her girlfriends. It was she was on a girls' night out actually, um, and she never, um, you know, she she was she never would go to this club like on normally because it was a like, kind of a rock club. She was like more into like sort of poppy kind of music kind of thing, and she was with her girlfriends. And oh, I'm like wondering how much to divulge of this, but yeah, I did meet her at the at a uh, at a club and. So here's a question for you, Rose. So what mm -hmm. made her like the one to marry versus? She looked hot. <laughs> <laughs> she was. Uh, she she looked like she was fun in bed, to be honest with you. And that's really all I was thinking about at the time when I was with her, because I was sort of coming out of that um, that BPD relationship. I was already probably about four months out of of dealing with my ex BPD, and oh. I was spinning plates, and Girl. she was. Which one? Was Mrs. Tomasi a party girl at the time? Um, she was a plate that I was spinning at the time. Plate, but she, a party girl, like you know, drank. You know, mm, not, not a lot. She went out. She had, she had girlfriends, but she wasn't like it wasn't like she was like getting out hammered and and she was my my wife's always been kind of responsible. She, like I said, she comes from a very like uh, conservative Christian family, and I know that that doesn't mean jack, but that was something that you know she she was never like over the she never did drugs or anything like that she never i mean she drank of course but so, uh, like a lot of guys when it comes to when it comes to the women that they have like preferences for like oh i like to get with fat women or i like to get with older women or i like to get with girls with you know black hair or small tits or big tits whatever those are usually the archetypes or the the beliefs of those preferences um, or fetishes um are what has been successful for the guy in the past didn't you meet your wife at a gig because you did, right? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, of course I did. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I met her at the place you're not supposed to meet quality women at, right? You might think that a talented pickup artist would be smashing made busts from the cradle to the grave. However, it is a quite common practice for these pickup artists to get married in secret and then hide their wives and pretend to still be smashing mad puss. For example, Donovan Sharp got secretly married to his girlfriend back in 2019. Oh. A lot of people don't like that, don't want to hear that, but that's what happened. He even had a one-year anniversary in Florida back last year in 2020. But people don't know about this. Donovan, but then Donovan goes anti-marriage on his channel all day long, right? Oh, if his oh. audience knew that, if his audience knew that, he'd lose a lot of money. So he lies about it consistently over and over and over again, just like Rolo. These are the ways these guys get defrauded in ways they don't realize. You have a guy go on YouTube, bitch about marriage, bitch about this and that. And then what does he do? He go gets private married behind the scenes. He has a wedding and a honeymoon to Hawaii or some shit. That's why he didn't speak at Poland 21 convention, but he spoke later in the year in Orlando. Well, you might be able to forgive Rolo for getting married and not having the body of a sex god. Did you know that he is also broke? The minute he goes into his personal life, it's all a lie. Everything is not only a lie, it's the opposite. It's the inversion. For example, he says constantly, like, I'm not in it for the money, I'm not in it for the money, I'm not in it for the money. Dude, 80% of his income or more has been coming from the rational male for, like, years now. He's definitely in it for the money. He's in it for the money more than anyone else. How he foreclosed on his house, okay, he's also broke. You can only ride the, the book fame for so long. He's a money-fucking-grabbing scumbag. He's more money-hungry than anyone I've ever seen, ever. And I've worked with hundreds <laughs> of speakers. So this, this LARP, this LARP, <laughs> like, he's, he pretends to be this, like, red pill Santa Claus when the opposite is true. He's a super greedy guy who will dox and burn men to make an extra buck and get another book sale by hitting, you know, mainstream media, like a news cycle kind of thing. So that's just one example. He's just a massive fraud with that shit. Massive liar. He constantly gives on me. He harps on this, right? Oh, I'm this nice guy. I'm Red Bull Santa Claus. I'm not in it for the money. He works 60 hours a week on the rational mail. And most of his income has been coming from this for years by far. So it's a fucking lie. And that's just one example. Uh, him being a rock star in his 20s, all this bullshit. That's a massive lie. <laughs> uh, I think he hasn't fucked that many women. He did, he wasn't good back then. I think he did get laid a little bit, but it was mostly kind of like, you know, fool stuff, just like randomly bumping into these chicks or just kind of <laughs> having that status, doing some some gig at some random bar. Uh -huh. he's, ne he's never been good with women. He's
In our last video, we went over some of the troubles that the MGTOW community has had slipping into homosexuality. It turns out that this is not just some random happenstance, nor is it predatory behavior on the part of the homosexual community. We have the screenshots. I'm popping them up right here. This is the screenshots from the, uh, the back door on on the um this adwords uh, adwords yeah, yeah AdWords. so this is the adwords that somebody has to purchase for it matter of fact as you can see the uh the fifth the sixth one down says dating websites gay the seventh one is dating websites for gay men now at the top you see the rationalmail.com so if somebody were to type in dating websites for gay men his his website comes up if they top if they type in dating websites gay Rolo Tomasi comes up. If they type in free gay men dating sites, which is the fourth one from the bottom, the rationalmail.com comes up. If this was not bad enough, it turns out that Rolo Tomasi actually tried to overthrow both the 21 Club and the Red Man group. And not only did he try to overthrow these groups, but he doxed over 50 mins. I'll let them go ahead and tell the tale. My fellow Manosphereans, I'm Anthony Dream Johnson, founder and CEO of the 21 Convention, co-founder and CEO of the Redman Group, chairman of 21 Studios. Today I'm speaking to you because of the growing crisis of honor, integrity, and masculinity itself plaguing and holding back our community from true greatness. I'm directly referring to the recent controversy surrounding the actions of an author and self-proclaimed godfather of our community. The purpose of my words today are to review, bring clarity to, and summarize the real-life actions and choices of former speaker, business partner, and friend known to you as Rolo Tomasi. I make this video with a heavy heart, the reputation of my life's work on the chopping block, and with great hope and optimism for the future of this worldwide community of men and fathers. To begin, on June 2nd, 2019, Rolo Tomasi was confronted in a private 21 Convention speaker chat by several alumni speakers, including but not limited to George Bruno, Socrates, Alexander Cortez, Ivan Throne, and to the witness of many more. This confrontation focused on several related issues, including an incident from the 21 Convention in 2018 involving Rolo Tomasi and feminist New York Times reporter Nellie Bowles. The associated long standing conspiracy to conceal the true nature of these events and related unethical conduct by Rolo Tomasi in his association with the 21 Convention, a self-declared silent partner. In response to the mounting evidence of this unethical conduct, in close counsel with top alumni speakers, and consistent with our long-standing policy and terms, I chose to immediately remove Rolo Tomasi as a speaker from all future 21 Convention events, as well as his regular involvement in the Redman Group show. Rolo worked to immediately write and publish a blog post that same day, titled 21 Convention Dates Cancellation. In this post, he announced his removal from all 21 convention events, encouraged attendees to seek refunds on their tickets in contrast to our long-standing all-sales final policy, and stated then as a minority owner of the Redman Group company that the podcast itself would be dissolved and the channel disbanded. Statements that significantly damaged the Redman Group brand left thousands of fans in confusion and that Rolo had zero confirmation of or authority to make of any kind. On June 8, 2019, my company released a 15-page public statement providing facts, evidence, and detail on Rolo Tomasi's sudden removal from the 21 Convention and Red Mag Group brands. You can review this document in a link beneath this video at any time. Later revealed to the public by YouTuber and Red Mag Group panelist DDJ is that these actions by Rolo Tomasi were not isolated or accidental, but part of a larger pattern of behavior involving a failed coup on the Red Mag Group, and as revealed today, were part of the greatest conspiracy our community has ever seen and Rolo's own documented language to burn down the whole of the Manosphere, assassinate the legacy, credibility, and future of all 21 Convention events, to conspire with other speakers to aggressively take over the Redman Group, and most importantly, use its function as a parallel speaker organization to build a new Manosphere summit over the dead body of the 21 Convention, the longest running, largest, and most powerful event the Manosphere has ever seen, 17 events, across five countries over the past 13 years. Hundreds of speakers, thousands of videos, enjoyed by millions around the world. 
This disgusting, effeminate conduct by Rollo and his allies amounts to more than the attempted murder of my life's work that began at, all, at 17 years old, but was an attempted coup in our entire community. In a word, treason. Let's pause and reflect now on a foundational principle that Rollo Tomasi is fond of repeating in his work for the Rational Mail series. Behavior is the only measure of is the only true measure of motivation and intent. One more time, right from Rollo's blog, behavior is the only true measure of motivation and intent. I happen to agree, Rollo, so let's have a look at your behavior and see what comes up. This is Rollo Tomasi speaking at the 15th edition of the 21 Convention in October of 2018, giving his main presentation to over 200 men gathered from around the world to hear him and dozens of other speakers present their ideas on our platform. I mean, how many people here right now are here, and if your work found out about it, that you would be in trouble? Anybody? Hey, how many people here would, yeah, would you lose your, do you think you would lose your job? I think you probably would. I'd say, I, I already know that Goldman lost his job. Just two days later, Rollo would disobey a direct order from myself as CEO and the will of over 10 speakers who I counseled with on the issue of Nellie Bowles a potentially hostile mainstream media reporter who could put the privacy, identity, and futures of our attendees at major risk, something we had promised in good faith to safeguard them from to the best of our ability, consistent with all 21 convention events. Seen here, Rolla Tomasi directly invited the New York Times reporter with a history of... ...pieces on speakers like Dr. Jordan Peterson, to a private social gathering for our attendees and speakers, directly invited the New York Times reporter with a history consistent with all 21 convention events. Seen here, Rolla Tomasi directly invited the New York Times reporter with a history of writing hit pieces on speakers like Dr. Jordan Peterson to a private social gathering for our attendees and speakers. He had been speaking with this woman for months in writing, and yet remained sitting during the entire encounter like, a, like the silent coward he is. Rolo would go on to deny any involvement in her appearance that night, both in writing and orally to the speakers numerous times, as well as myself. With every opportunity to take masculine responsibility, own his mistakes, apologize, and seek redemption, he chose to instead cover it up in a web of lies and misdirection for over eight months. He lied to my face, he lied in writing, and he lied by omission. He lied to my friends, my speakers, my brothers, my top customers, and more recently, over 40,000 of his own fans. Here are the faces of just some of the men, the men he lied to. George Bruno, Ed Lattimore, Donovan Sharp, Richard Cooper, Alan Roger Curry, Tanner Guzzi, Jack Donovan, Ivan Throne, Texas Dom, Jack Murphy, Hunter Drew, Socrates, Alexander J. A. Cortez, Goldman Unleashed, Elliot Hulse, Dr. Sean T. Smith, and more. So there we have it, folks. Rollo Tomasi. Divorce, bankrupt, and willing to dox over 50 of his mates from the manosphere to try and get ahead and become the next Jordan Peterson. Rolo Tomasi, he is a grifter, a piece of shit and deserves to be exposed and chased off of the internet. As always, I would like to thank my Patreons, Kenny TV, Casey, Nat Clow, Jordan and uh, some other people. I don't really remember the names right now because I'm kind of drunk and high and oh, it's kind of the end of the night right now. But anyway, join the Ian Ellis Patreon and uh, fuck Rollo. Oh my, I can't believe my ears.